Journey Podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm coming to you from Seattle, Washington today um, and every other day too. Um, and my roommate's cat just came and sat down on all of my notes so if I forget something we all get to blame Louie. It's Louie's fault. <laughs> so um, I've got actually a lot of projects to talk about today. I've got three FOs, two whips, a couple of new releases, and some upcoming knitting plans that I'm going to talk about. I'm trying so hard to see what I've written down, but again, Louie's laying on my notes. I'll, I'll try and include some, some video of him um, at some point here because uh, I know people on the internet like cats, right? I'll exploit Louie on the internet to gain favor, it's fine. So, why don't we get started? Um, we're gonna talk, everything we're talking about today is knitting. I'm not, I don't have any crochet. I did do a couple of granny squares that I was talking about in my last episode. Um, but it's the same as the last ones that I showed you, so there's nothing, nothing new to show there. Um, I'll show you when I do some new colors though. So let's start with what I'm wearing. This is the Dreamy Dreamia. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I might not be. I know it's a Ukrainian word and I don't have a lot of experience with Ukrainian. Um, it's by Ksenia Nedion who is Life is Cozy. And I test the knit this for her. I'll take it off here and I'll show you more. Um, it's a really long kind of scarf, asymmetric scarf shawl with two colors and a bunch of different textures. So see here. Got some some lace, some stars, and some yarn overs. And then some garter. And I really love Ksenia's patterns. I actually have one that I'm going to share with you guys today. Um, so I know that this red orange is Cascade Heritage. And I know that the super variegated color is Malabrigo Arroyo, Arroyo I think. Whatever their single ply fingering weight yarn is. I have no clue what the colors are because this was a secret test knit. I didn't write them down um, because I couldn't put it on Ravelry and the pattern didn't come out for like seven or eight months after I knitted originally. So I don't remember what colors these are. I am so sorry. And I, like I can look up the Cascade one. I don't think I'm gonna be able to look up the Malabrigo one. So I'm so sorry. Um, but I will have the pattern link down below. Highly recommend it. Ksenia is a beautiful designer. Um, but should we start with FOs? I've got three FOs to share today. So we'll start with, I mean, we can just go, go in order of what I've got. I said in my last podcast, I wanted my vest finished before September 1st because I wanted to cast on a new sweater that came out on the first. Well, I finished it. And I'll insert some B-roll of me wearing it and all styled. But this is the RQ8 vest by Carissa Lamb. Um, I knit this in a Knit Crate yarn, Odin Wool's Bloom in the color Forget Me Not. I was size three and I used about 2.6 balls of yarn and in both of my last two episodes I was talking about I'm not sure how I feel about it I hate it I love it I hate it I love it I'm not sure I think it's looking good I think it's looking bad how do I feel once it's totally finished and blocked and styled correctly mixed feelings still still mixed feelings so that's great we'll see how I feel about it after I have it in my possession and I wear it some um, I finished this 
over a week ago and I haven't worn it once. So that kind of says something. Um, overall, my feelings on the finished object are heavily influenced by my feelings on the pattern. I do not recommend this pattern at all. I don't think that it was revised at all. It definitely wasn't tech edited. It, I don't know if it was tested. It's just very, it's confusing and numbers are off, measurements are off. It's just, I don't recommend it. There are better cabled vest patterns out there um, that I haven't knit. This was the first vest that I've ever knit and actually the first all over cabled garment that I've knit. Um, I have knit garments with cables on them, but this is the first one where I've done that. It's just all cables. So again, I don't recommend this pattern. Do not knit it. We'll search out somebody, somebody else's um, cabled vest. But how do I feel about the finished object? I am happy with it. I was able to... So I was talking about when I had finished it, or when I was close to finishing it, that it seemed really short to me. And my torso is, I usually have to add about four inches on to everything that I knit to, for it to sit at a reasonable length. Um, and I knit this exactly to pattern because I thought that I was gonna run out of yarn. I did not run out of yarn. But again, that was something in the pattern that it was not clear. Uh, and it was not written well. So that was something else that bothered me. So I was able to block out an additional maybe three inches. So it's a little bit better, but I do have to be selective about what I wear this with. And right now I think I only have about two outfits that I'm comfortable wearing this with. So we'll see as time goes on and I add and take away things from my wardrobe how I feel about it, but right now, I'm neutral. I'm not happy with it, but I'm not in love with it. But I'm gonna keep it as a piece in my wardrobe, and I'm gonna keep playing around with it. Um, I am going to try and add some more outfits to this. Let's see, close up here so you can see the cabling. Um, one of my favorite things to do is film a, um, a styling video and I'll do like a, an Instagram reel where I'm filming a, a couple different ways that I would style this piece and I like doing this doing these once I finish most of my knitted garments because it really helps me get creative on how I think a piece is going to work in my wardrobe so we're definitely going to try that with this maybe after I finish this filming this video or sometime this weekend and we'll come back to it. So there is finished object number two. Um, or finished object number one. Let's move on to finished object number two, which is my granny knocks your socks off. Now these were a test knit for Emily Crow, um, who has a podcast here on YouTube and I will link her podcast down below. It's called Crochet Creations and she is a knit and crochet designer. And look at how fun these are. So I've talked about these loads in my last two episodes, but they are done. Um, this was the first time that I have done a crochet toe and I'm glad that I tried it. I don't think I'll be doing it again. I just feel like it fits a little bit off. Um, it's just not my preference. Maybe it fits you great, maybe it not, but this is not, it doesn't fit me well because I have um, just the way that my toes are shaped. Um, it doesn't suit me, but that's fine. Now I found out that it doesn't suit me. Would I have known otherwise? No. Um, so these are done. I will be wearing them often. I really want to uh, style them with a pair of jelly sandals, which I absolutely will. I have a pair of jelly sandals. Um, so I will 
have to go take some pictures of that and they will be posted on my Instagram, of course. Oh, and the yarn. Okay, so um, this fun variegated color is Knit Picks Stroll Hand Painted in Celery Seed. The dark blue is Stroll in Navy. The bright blue is a Katya sock yarn and the gray is a Yarnaceous uh, salt of fingering. Oh, hello, Louie. Hello. Have you come to join us? Yeah. Um, it was an, a Yarnaceous mini. Okay. Uh, you can't stand, you can't stay here. There you go. Okay. So, finish those last socks for this episode. Last finished object that I have today, I finished yesterday. And I started it one week ago. Now, I talked a second ago about how I finished this. I want, okay, Louie. Betty, I'm sorry, no, you can't come up here. You can sit on the couch. Okay. I wanted to finish this so I could cast on a new sweater that was coming out last Thursday, September 1st. So I did. I cast it on September 1st. I finished it yesterday. Ta-da! This is the Chunky Souffle. And um, you might be able to see, none of my ends are woven in because I didn't feel like it yesterday. No, stay. Um, I didn't feel like it yesterday. I got to the end of knitting it and I was just like, I need a break. So I will insert some B-roll here. You can see this all done. This is the second souffle that I have done um, from Laura Penrose. And I did the original souffle tea, and now I have done the chunky souffle. So this is in Lion Brand Yarns Hue and Me in the color Artichoke. And um, it is an 80% wool, 20% acrylic. I knit the size 5, so it's a 44 inch bust. I have a 40 inch bust. And I showed you my um, swatch last week where I had one stitch less per 4 inches. So it's a little bit smaller than 44 inches. That's fine. It still has positive ease. I was trying to eat my candy. <laughs> um, it's a little, it still has enough positive ease that I'm not cons I'll be right back. Alright. Took the candy away from the cat, so hopefully he doesn't get into it anymore. He shouldn't because he decided to go hang out in the bathroom. We'll see how that ends up. <laughs> but, back to the souffle, the chunky souffle. Um, all done. I did modify it just a little bit. I added an extra three inches to the body. So it is still a little bit cropped. That's fine. Um, and I did the ruffle just a little bit different to um, make it a little bit easier on my hands because this is such a bulky yarn. Um, I'm not going to tell you how she suggests doing the ruffle in the pattern because it is a paid for pattern, but I did do it differently to make it easier on my hands. Um, and I do, I prefer doing ruffles in the way that I, I changed it to anyways. Um, but I love it. I love this color. This is, like I said again, artichoke. It is this beautiful sage green, super pretty. And I ended up buying three, three packs of this from Joann's. I ended up using exactly five and a half balls so I will go and return those those last three balls to Joann's that I haven't used which is fantastic I love being able to return things that I haven't used um, could I use it yes there's a shawl that I want to make that uses hue and me yarn do I have the budget to keep things 
around that I don't have a use for right now. No, it's going to serve me a lot better to go and return those balls of yarn. So here is my chunky souffle. Cast on and cast off in one week. One week, how fantastic is that? I'm so pleased. And I will definitely, like I will be wearing this when it gets colder. It is a little bit warm today still and actually wildfire season has started in the Pacific Northwest which is it's very late this year normally wildfire season is July August and we're a week and in some into September now and it's not even that bad knock on wood let's all hope and pray that wildfire season stays low this year but it is uh, warm and smoky outside right now. So prayers for all of that, that everything goes okay and it's not as dis devastating as it has been in years past. But once it gets cooler, this will be a staple. This is actually the second garment, second sweater that I've knit in Hue and Me. Um, and that the other one I have I use it as just a sweatshirt it is so cozy so warm it's color work I'll wear it on the podcast here at some point it's the folklore by Alexandra Tavell who's two of wands who developed you and me with lion brand um, and I'm 100% sure this is gonna be the same exact thing this is just gonna be a throw over whatever I'm wearing when it gets cold um, the only thing that I'm kind of thinking about right now is when I tried it on last, and you may be able to have seen this in the B-roll, is that the neckband, it doesn't look that way, but it is a little bit wide, so I might throw some elastic in the neckband um, just to kind of tighten it up just a little bit, but I'm not concerned about it now. I can't wear it right now anyways because it is still so warm. But I am excited to, I'm excited to wear it. Very excited to wear it. So, beautiful pattern, Laura. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend the original souffle. I haven't knit the summer souffle or the petite souffle. Um, I have plans at some point to knit the summer souffle. I haven't gotten a chance to yet. I have plans to knit another of the mohair souffle not on my current radar but it will happen at some point soon ish but I love it it is one of my favorite garment patterns and I have I have said before I do not like repeating patterns knitting patterns multiple times um, the souffle all three versions of it that I can wear I can say that I probably will knit multiple versions of all of them I would love to get some drops air wish I don't know whichever one that Laura knit the original version in um, to do to do a chunky souffle in that because I know it's so so fuzzy and so light and that one is a little bit the one that I made dense perhaps would be the best way to say it um, yeah but we'll see we'll see we'll see I love it highly recommend and if you haven't seen Laura's podcast as well she's definitely one of my favorite knitting podcasters um, I think she's fantastic to sit down and, and just hang out a little bit with while you're knitting so that is all I have for work uh, or FOs. Shall we move over to my works in progress? I have two whips and let's go with this one first. So this is being held in a bag, kind of like a small tote bag. How cute is this? that my boyfriend's mother made me for Christmas last year. It just has Mickey Mouse 
uh, playing with bubbles. Oh, and Minnie's on it too. Mickey and Minnie playing with bubbles all over it. Um, and she does have an Etsy shop for her bags that I will have linked down below. It's called Ruby Sewn Bags. Um, I don't know if she sells this style, but I like this for shawls, which is what I've got here. And we were just talking about Ksenia Nadion, and I've got another Ksenia pattern, uh, another Ksenia shawl on my needles. Um, this is actually what I purchased, the pattern that I purchased for in redemption of, for this test knit. So for, if you test knit for her, you get a free um, a coupon code to purchase one of her other patterns and I purchased this one. So this is the straw flower shawl. And this is what it looks like so far. Try and figure out the best way to show this to you because it's kind of rolling up on itself. This is, oh my goodness, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Um, it, it's the same idea as the Dreamy Dreamia that I'm wearing right now, where you are taking, you have two different yarn colors and you have different, like, th I have three, three different knit patterns that you are mix matching. And she has it all laid out, um, here here's the pattern so you can see like it says um, garter stripe and color a work blah 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 garter stripe and color B work blah 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 bobble stripe blah 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 lace stripe and color a work blah 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 so this is this is how many I've done I've done through 12 sections so far and there's 29 sections. I'm currently at 255 stitches and I will work all the way up until there's 440 stitches on this needle. So it is a big shawl. It is a triangle shawl. And I'm kind of doing something a little bit different than the pattern recommends for this one. So the dark emerald green here, this is Knit Picks Gloss fingering in the color pine and the neon lime green yellow whatever you want to call it I call it a lime green is knit picks knit picks shimmer lace in the color euphorbia so the the gloss is a 70% merino 30% silk and the shimmer lace is 100% alpaca. And it's not a Surrey alpaca, it is, it is plied. Um, and it doesn't have like the, uh, the fuzz that a Surrey does. And she recommends using a mohair for the lace bit. So I ended up, because this is what I had in stash, and this was a stash busting project, I used the gloss. She said to use a fingering weight and a, a lace weight, but she recommended a mohair for the fuzzy. I just used what I had. But I think this color combination is, oh, it's very out of my comfort zone with the neon. It's something that I don't think I would normally pick out, um, but it was, it, it came to me in a mystery bag from Knit Picks. I actually really like it. So we'll see how much I wear it once I finish it. But right now I'm really enjoying it. It's kind of, um, most of the projects that I've been working on lately have just been stocking it. So it's nice to have a project that you kind of have to think about a little bit. So, um, 
I actually started this a while ago. I started this in May and then I put it down and I forgot about it completely until this last weekend when I picked it back up. And I haven't worked on it a whole lot that, since then too, but this is going into my ra main rotation for projects now. So since I picked it back up, I have done this green lace section and this these two stripes of neon garter. That's it. But I worked a lot on the souffle this week. So this will be jumping back into my rotation. I'd like to finish it also because I think I need these needles for the MCAL, the Stephen West MCAL. These are four and a half millimeter needles, which is what? A US 7. I think he's recommending a US 4 this year. But last year I had to go up, I think, two needle sizes to. I don't really care about making gauge on a shawl. It's, it's a shawl. Uh, I don't need it to be perfect. But I think. I'll talk about my, my MCAL shawl from next year when we get closer to MCAL for this year. But last year I did the first section in the needle size he recommended. It was just too small. So I ended up going up multiple needle sizes. So I think I need those, those needles for MCAL this year. Which we'll get to in a little bit because I have somehow already picked out my yarn for the mystery knit along for this year and we'll talk about it at the end of the episode but for now let's talk about the project that I have been teasing since I started this podcast I have been telling you for weeks that I just need to finish a little bit more of the cardigan that I'm designing before I can actually show it to you. I need to finish just a little bit more before I show it to you. It's it's almost there. I can now show it to you. I'm now at a place where I'm comfortable sharing it to, with people. So this this is the back panel, and it is so big that it won't fit on the screen unless I pull it all the way back. This is the back panel of the cardigan that I'm designing. I have a name for it as well, but let's talk about it first. So you can see it was heavily inspired by log cabin quilts and the kind of cozy rustic feelings that we get, that I get when I see log cabin quilts. Um, so it is a drop shoulder construction. I have started, I have cast on now and have started the, probably the right front panel. Um, and it's going to go so much quicker than the back panel did because it is half the size and it is one color, just garter stitch back and forth. Um, I will add some shaping around up here, but for now, it got your stitch back and forth. It's gonna go so much quicker. It's great. Um, so this will be. I don't. I haven't graded anything yet. I haven't finished writing out the pattern, so I don't know what size this is gonna be. But this is going to be a 48 inch bust. Um, It is designed with lots of positive ease, so you get that big cozy feeling. And I really wanted like a good fall, winter, cozy, cuddly cardigan out of this. And that's really what I've been aiming for this whole time. Um, I'm not going to show you the back because it is the worst mess of all time of of ends that need to get woven in. So if you end up testing this for me or or, and, or knitting it, know that I too am suffering and I am so sorry. <laughs> um, 
but this was the only way I think Intarsia was the only way to really get this effect so there is um, there's the pattern the back and the the charts the, the blocks the blocks of this all kind of move around now what am I naming this? So I said that it is inspired by log cabin quilts and the kind of cozy feeling that I get from them. Okay, so we were talking about the name that I picked out for my cardigan. So I was telling you about how my inspiration was log cabin quilts and the warm cozy feeling that I get from those and how they really feel like a like a country home in the middle of the woods in the middle of the mountains so kind of taking those things and then combining that with um, I don't know if anybody else has picked up on this yet but all of my patterns except for one and that was the first pattern that I put out before I decided that I'm gonna go do this that all of my patterns are named after places um, most of them so far are named after neighborhoods in Seattle because I'm doing my Seattle sock series one is named after a small town in Missouri where my cousin's wedding was held this one This one is going to be called the Cleellum Cardigan. Now, Cleellum is a small town in the middle of the Cascade Mountains, and it's where my parents live. And it really feels like all of those cozy, warm, small town, middle of the middle of the mountains, middle of the forest. It's a fantastic small town, and the word Cleellum was taken. Um, from the Kittitas First Nations word for swift water and nearby it actually runs right through the middle of the town of Cleellum. It's a Cleellum River and there's also Lake Cleellum nearby and it's really like it's a small town that has that very it feels cozy and once I finish it I'll definitely be going and taking my um, my pictures with this in Cleellum I'll go visit my parents um, which is it's, it's a little bit further away it's about an hour and a half from where I live now in Seattle um, and it's it's beautiful especially in the fall I think it's really when it shines. Um, if any of you have ever heard of Leavenworth, which is the tourist town of Washington State, forget Seattle, forget the San Juan Islands, it's definitely Leavenworth, it's the tourist town in Washington. Um, it is in the middle of the mountains and it is a Bavarian German town. like. 100% Bavarian German town. Um, all of the buildings look like Germany. All of the restaurants are German restaurants. Um, they do Oktoberfest. They do Christmas at the end in Leavenworth. Beautiful. Don't go. It's miserable trying to get there. Um, but it's it's close by Leavenworth. Uh, right on I-5 going east from Seattle but anyways I digress the Cleolum cardigan welcome to the world I hope I hope you guys enjoy it because really my thought process with making patterns is oh I really want to see this I really want this for me and then I go and look it up and I see nobody's done it so I'm like well I guess I'm doing it myself and that's what I did here, is that I wanted a log cabin quilt shacket, but I'm not really doing a shacket, it's going to be a drop shoulder cardigan. Um, and the 
this is how far I am on the first front panel. Let's see if I can finish the second front panel by the next episode two weeks from now. Probably. I kind of hope that I can finish both front panels, but I've got something. I've got a little trip in between now and then. So we'll see how much I can get done. I'm not holding myself to any deadlines on this. I want I wanted it done by October, but I've picked up other projects that I want to work on. I have other design commitments that I need to work on. So I'm just kind of playing everything by ear and it gets finished when it gets finished and really I don't even want to release the pattern until like January anyways. So I'm giving myself lots of time to finish, get it tech edited, go through edits, get it tested and before it comes out. So here it is. I'm very proud of this. This is actually the first time that I've ever done intarsia was on this pattern. First time ever. And of course I will have lots of tutorial videos in the pattern itself and I will talk about all the tutorial videos that I used as we get closer to things being finished. But it was overwhelming because there is a lot going on but intarsia really was not as difficult as I thought it would be. So I'm very proud of that. So that is all that I have in terms of knitting that I have done shall actually I mean technically this is knitting that I have done but it's fine we'll talk about it now I've talked about this in my first episode this is my fossil frenzy junior tee or fossil frenzy tee junior I think is how she phrases it um, it's by Mary Hunt I was a part of the test knit group for this. I did the 6 to 12 month size and I will be gifting this to my baby nephew. And this is available for purchase now. It's available today. Um, I will have it linked down below and Mary is offering 20% off um, I believe through this weekend. Uh, so I'll have her Instagram linked down below with that information. I highly recommend you go follow Mary because she has the most incredible like dreamy color work patterns. Um, this is the second pattern that I've done for her and I have one on my queue that I'm hoping to get done before the first Seattle Kraken home game this year which I will be going to. Um, if that's a little hint for you well, but I'm hoping I can get it done before the game. Um, so Fossil Frenzy T Junior, available now. It is size from newborn to 10 years old. And if you want an adult version too, she already has that. So go check it out. It's really fun, highly recommend it. But let's talk about some upcoming knitting plans. So let's talk, let's do this one first. So. I told you that I'm going on a little bit of a trip in between now and the next episode. I'm going to San Diego um, for a business trip with my family's business. And we have work to do in San Diego Thursday through Sunday. And then on Monday, we get to have a fun day. And we get to celebrate the end of the, the season that my, my family's business goes through. And my entire family and my boyfriend are all gonna go to Disneyland. And I cannot wait. I'm so excited. So it's only for one day, but it's really gonna like, it. I'm hoping that it's gonna fill my cup up and it's really going to help me. So everything, I need a one day project, it won't be one day, but to get me through for lines and while we're just sitting around because as much as I love doing things at Disneyland, you sit in the lines quite a bit and my family loves playing heads up while we're in line. We love playing I Spy. We love 
chowing down on our food before the cast members yell at us that we need to finish our food before we get on rides, but I need a project to bring with me. So I will be bringing this, which is another bag that my boyfriend's mom made for me, and the inside is another really fun Mickey Mouse fabric. So this will house my project, and inside I have got a nine inch circular needle. This is a US one. All of my notions in a baby Yoda bag and a skein of yarn that I need to wind up that is from the Sorella Disneyland collection. Because of course. Now this is Main Street and if you've watched any of my podcast episodes, you're probably like, that's not your colors, Ashley. And you would be correct. This is not my colors. This is not, this is not what I jive with. But when this collection came out, I was like, this is the most Disney colorway she could have ever possibly created. And it made me really happy, even though I don't usually go for pastels and I don't ever, ever go for pink, especially pastel pink. But, and I don't think you'll be able to see it because the lighting, oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe just a little bit right there. This is Selena. Um, so this is a 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 20% nylon, nylon, and 5% Gold Selena. And the combination of this colorway with it being from the Disneyland collection and it being called Main Street with the Selena, I was like, when I purchased it, I also purchased a sock set um, of Epcot. And I'm gonna save that for another trip. But when I purchased it, I was like, I am saving this for the next time we go on our trip and this is gonna be my project for the next trip we go on. And it just makes me really happy. So I will be winding this up before we leave on Thursday. And these will be coming with me to be a pair of socks that I will work on in line. Um, and they'll probably be a pair of shorties and I'm hoping that I'll have them done too by the next episode because really I can do a pair of shorties in two days but if I don't finish them, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. I'm not anticipating that I'll finish two, a full pair in the one day that we'll be there because I've got stuff to do. I've got rides to ride, I've got Mickey Mouse to hug, I've got churros to eat, and I've got Haunted Mansion to stand in line for for four hours straight because I will keep going on and on and on and on because I am a Haunted Mansion girly. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. But, okay, so that is um, the first plan that I have. The second plan that I have is a Stephen West Mystery Knit Along for 2022. And he has come out and said that it is called Twists and Turns this year. And I have already started, um, already started. I already picked out my yarn. And I'm going to be filming a vlog that I will put up here on this channel um, once the MCAL is over and once my shawl is done. Uh, from the moment that I started picking my yarn until the shawl is blocked and finished and I can wear it. So last year I didn't finish until April. So we'll see how long that takes this year. Hopefully not as long because I'm not putting as many um, stressors on myself. But I went through and I filmed the whole process of me picking out the yarn that I want to knit this with. So I'm not going to go too deep into my um, reasoning behind my selections. I'm just going to talk about it and ask you what you think. Um, and I've mentioned a couple times now that I'm on a budget, like a really strict budget, and I can't afford a whole lot right now. So I had to pick what I could from stash. So I 
will need to purchase one more ball of yarn but it is from Knit Pick so it's only about $14 and that's I can do that that's within my means right now but buying a full shawl's worth is not so I had to pick as much as I could from stash so we'll start with this this is a Sorella oopsie I got it last December so I believe I may be completely wrong on this front I believe that this is Ivy from the Taylor Swift collection and it's beautiful it's gorgeous so that's gonna be color one um, color two is the yarn that I need to buy a second skein of and this is from Knit Picks. This is Stroll Tonal in the color Eucalyptus. So, this is what we've got so far. Remember how I said I don't do pastels when I was talking about the, the Disneyland yarn? I can do this pastel. I can do, I can do pastel green and blue. I don't do pastel pink or purple. I don't do pink or purple in general, so I don't know what my reasoning behind that is. But, so those are my, my two main colors. My accent color, this is the one that he says you only need one skein of. Those other two you need two skeins of. I'm going a little different. I'm gonna go with a mohair. This is Hobby Diablo Wild Print in the color 19. And I feel like it's going to be fine if I do a mohair. I think it'll be totally fine. So, this is my palette. Tell me what you think. I want to know. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit out there. But I think it's going to be so pretty. And I'm I'm really loving it. So Yeah, and I'm really excited that I managed to find a project that I can keep both of these two together for. Um cuz it's just kind of been hanging out since December because I was like I have two skeins of fingering weight sock yarn. What am I ever going to do with two full skeins? It's not enough for garment for me. It's too much for a pair of socks, but I don't want to split them up. Stephen West shawl is perfect. So this is what I've got now. I just have to, I have to order one more of these, but I'm not feeling rushed on it because I can probably get through a decent amount of the shawl before I need the second skein. I just need to wait until October 6th, 8th, when the MCAL starts. So, here we go. Alright, so that is all I have in terms of makes for me. Um, kind of want to finish this episode out with a big thank you. So. I need to announce a giveaway winner from last episode and that's gonna go up right here so thank you all for commenting on the last episode um, as a refresher whoever wins this is going to get a copy of my green lake sock pattern and um, so if you're the winner who I have posted right here send me an email I'll have my email listed in the description down below send me an email with either your Ravelry username or if you would prefer the pattern in a PDF, let me know then too. Just send me an email. I will be so happy to send it to you and I'm so happy that I had quite a few people enter. So thank you so much. Um, the other thing that I really want to say thank you for is everyone who's kind of, who, who has watched a video and subscribed and said such kind things in the comments of either of my two videos that I've put up so far. Um, I 
just hit 100 subscribers, which is a small number in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't compare like much at all to any of the podcasters that most of us listen to on the regular, but I am feeling incredibly thankful and humbled that a hundred of you, over a hundred of you now have decided to stick around and watch, um, watch my videos. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I've been having a little bit of a rough mental health go of it lately and logging into my YouTube channel, YouTube account every morning and seeing those numbers take up have really helped kind of make me feel a little bit more worthwhile and they're small numbers but that's okay. I didn't expect anything going into this. Um, I, I said in my first episode that I've tried to do this before and I've ended up deleting all of those videos that I've done before because I would get five, six, seven, eight views and no comments and no nothing. And seeing so many people watch and comment and subscribe and like, thank you. It has helped how awful I've been feeling lately. Like it really has, so thank you. Um, and I'm gonna keep doing videos not okay the other thing that i'm curious about is do you guys like this every other week format where because i'm doing every other week i'm ending up with more progress or do you want to see every week where how much progress i'm making that week um I'm kind of thinking like I will do one video a week where it's going to be staggered where one video or one week I'll do a podcast and next week I will do a video about something else maybe like a project that I'm working on but I'm also not sure that I have enough content where I can do that um we'll see maybe it'll be sporadic where I upload an extra video but thank you um, that's all I've got right now. Uh, personal life. I told you guys, uh, last weekend my family went on our family vacation. Um, my extended family. We all went out to the, the Olympic P Peninsula to this beach called Point No Point. And my family has been going camping there since my grandma was little and it's been a long time of every single Labor Day weekend uh, my family goes out there and we've kind of moved from camping to staying in houses Airbnbs as my grandparents escalate in age um, but it's it's always really special to go spend all the time a whole weekend away from everything with my cousins and my aunts and uncles and especially on a beach there's just something about a beach that's just everything's better <laughs> because of it even though the beaches around here like they're they're not soft sand it's kind of rocky there's lots of shells and everything and it's colder like I won't go in the water in Puget Sound. It's it's special. It's so nice. Um, the one big downer on the weekend, um, this is gonna get dark. Trigger warning the, for this. Um, there was a catastrophic plane crash that happened across from the house that we were all staying at on the water and they lost the plane in the water. The Coast Guard spent 24 hours searching for it and they were only able to recover one out of the 10 people that were on board. And we were sitting there for most of Saturday and Monday watching the Coast Guard helicopters go back and forth and the, the rescue ships out there and the 
it was so awful to sit there and watch and know that 10 people's families are sitting there not knowing where their family members are. And in the end, they had to call off the search because they couldn't find anyone except for that one person. And the airplane's at the bottom of Puget Sound and they can't find them. And it's so, so sad. And we watched them for hours and hours and hours and we kept refreshing the Coast Guard's Twitter account trying to find out what was going on. It's absolutely heartbreaking and I am sending so much love to those people who are in, in the plane and their families. I can't imagine. So that was a really sad way to end the episode to end the, the weekend too it was very sad um so let's look for something more positive uh this weekend i'm not doing anything <laughs> i'll be knitting i'll be hanging out i will be uh, applying for more jobs. Next weekend I'll be in San Diego, back on a beach. Um, and I'll be eating tacos and drinking margaritas and I'm going to Disneyland. So that's something positive for me. Something very positive. So that is it for me. That's all I've got for this week for this episode. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, leave a comment down below letting me know how you're doing. Uh, yeah, that's it. So give this video a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more. Um, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!